Yeah, yours on one or two. Two. I can hear you. Two. They're picking on me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We've had technical difficulties here watching the Augie first, fir first few minutes of the game. We're trying to get my partner's uh, mic fix, Jay Crone. So, Jay, wing it with me. Help me with the stats, will you? I've been silenced. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. To set the starting lineups here, Jim, we got number uh, 20, Drew Karstens for Augie. Uh, 20, uh, Brad Novak is number 34, and we have uh, 32 is number, uh, or Joe Bauman is the number. Brad, boy, this is going to be fun. Oh, Aaron Pass. Drew thought he had something there with Brad Cutting, but that was not going to be. That wasn't Drew either. That was Jim Thomas who passed that. Jay, I need you. We need you. I can't do this alone. I've been silenced, Jim. Anyway, oh, number 54. Number 54 is Theo Powell. Theo Powell, he's 6'7", 225 out of Streamwood. He is a horse, and he averages 17 points a game. Augustana comes into this at 7-3, and, three, and uh, Carthage is about 5-4. and four. So this is an important game for Augustana. Three-pointer by Joe, miss, rebound by Carthage, and we'll go back to the other end. This is all inside game right here. Jump hook, and didn't get the roll. Good for Augie. But they got the rebound, another shot. Jay, that kid, number 30, is Mark Morrison out of Deerfield. 205, sophomore. A lot of kids. And Sean, back to Jim. Over to Joe Bauman. Joe's going to take it in. Nice pass to Brad Nova. He didn't get it, but Sean did. Nice pass work there.
You know, Sean Clemens almost shooting 54%. Vikings uh, look like they want to work an inside now, and, and uh, maybe they're trying to get to the Nice strong move there. Whoa. Back to Powell, they got a foul called Travis Hoyt. Powell is over the line for two shots. Looked like a pretty good block. I didn't see Travis's body next to him, and uh, so Fritz here is a saying is Fritz is a referee out there. He could get mad at us. Might have been a little anticipation there. Yeah. Brad Novak checks back in for Travis now. Carthage is winning here tw uh, 12 to 8. 12 to 28 to go. First half. Paul Nash and Bolton, 13-8. 5 for Carthage. And D.L. Powell for Cartridge, Jay. He's shooting 54%, so you can tell all his points are going to come in the paint. Yeah, he's an inside player, no doubt. Look at he's pretty good on his free throws there. He's 68% free throw shooter on there. Gets the line quite off, and he has 135 free throws. Nice pass. Nice pass to Clemens. He's fouled. Strong move to the basket. He's fouled. He'll shoot two. If some of you are just joining us, uh, we had a little technical difficulty here. Jay fell over in his chair and pulled the strings out of the uh, camera, so we're back on air. Thanks a lot, Jim. <laughs> Sean with us. First one. Bounces off the rim. We got a chance here. Uh, Missy Miner's doing the camera work tonight. She's the daughter of Jess Medina, Family Ties Productions. And uh, she's come out to help us tonight with the Augie game. Second one's good by Clemens. The Vikings pull with him. Full court pressure here for Vikings, kind of a uh, one, two, two zone press. They're working for something. Jay's guarding pretty tough. Here's Brad. With Theo out of there, I think they're kind of confused on what to do. Yeah, they uh, definitely want to go inside when they have him. It looks like Menard benefits from the outside. Oh, wow. Well, 44 is the other scorer along with Powell, so if they don't have Theo in there, they're definitely going to go after uh, Menard. It appears as Jake gets more and more minutes, he looks better and better. Come on, Jay, let's sink these in. We got a good crowd here tonight. You know, an interesting note about Drew Carson. 
He's only shooting 29% from the three-point line, but you point out earlier, 45% overall. So Drew, keep taking it to the hole. Forget the three-pointers. Gonna, Menards, uh, he's going to walk around. They're going to look for him. I think he's the only offense besides Powell. Good defense. That. Whoa. Jay Scott Hood, that thing was down by the CCIW mark. That's got to be 30 feet out. Yeah, Sean's a good athlete. Well, of course, then Sean is shooting almost 48, 49 percent inside, so that's his game too. Come on, Sean, knock these down. You got a two-shot foul here. There's we got one. Got a good-sized crowd here tonight, Jay. I need a hot dog, though. We got to get excited. We had the first three minutes. We had no sound. We have sound now, right, Missy? Okay. She says yes. You know, it's hard to see. I was watching St. Ambrose play today on TV, and uh, you really can't see the action that's going on. On, but look, look at under there. They're really battling. Oh, that's traveling. Oh, and a kick off the foot. We lucked out there. Second chances for the Vikings here, Jim. No. Doing good job Menard, air ball from deep in the corner. Now here comes the air ball out. He's thinking he got fouled, indicating to the referee that he got fouled, but no call. The Augie, uh, Augie uh, kids over there on him, but here's the deal 36% free throw or um, three point percentage for Augustana and 33% for the team for the year for Carthage. They can keep shooting those all the time. They gotta go to the bread and butter people. That's right, you gotta, it looks like the Vikings are trying to work it inside. Now uh, Hoyt's, Hoyt is checked back. You know, we got a blocking foul on Carthage. That could have went either way, Jim. Yep. And uh, fortunately, the Carthage oh, is going to go to the second. Yeah, I think, I think Keenan Johnson, to be honest with you, he was set. I hate to say that, but I think Drew went into him. His, he was set. Stripped out of a uh, 32's hand. Yep. It's a tough pass. Carth is still in his zone. Powell's back in. Yeah, I know it. Well, Drew's a much better shooter than you just saw there. That was a four shot. He's a, he's a good driver and he's a good set shooter when he gets open. He was not open on that shot. Menard. Nice rebound by Travis. There we go. You know, something I noticed there with Joe driving like that, that Powell, he didn't even attempt to go after that shot. He could have blocked that. If that kid's going to be that way, take it in all night.
Nice hustle by Drew. Ready, Missy? Okay, Jay, we're back. Jay, Jay Crone, we're back. Jim, am I here, Jim? Hey, you just said something right before the uh, timeout was called. Coach G is coming with five guys. Normally, I, I hope it works, but normally it's it's hard to shoot five guys and five guys in and out. Yeah, you, you, you uh, just don't seem to get the continuity when you're substituting five guys at a time like that. You've got a whole new unit coming, coming in cold off the bench. You like to carry on with at least uh, a player or two that's uh, been hot here recently. But coming with five points, so let's see what they do. Nice I pass. Now that, that might take these five and do what we just said. That was a beautiful pass. What they what they didn't do is come in and try to throw up a shot real quick. They worked it around. I think that's what, that's what they want to do tonight is working inside against this zone. Jay McAdams Thorne made a beautiful pass to uh, Brad Novak. They call that thread the needle, and he did. Here comes Powell. See, he elevates. That's tough to stop. Oh, no. Jay, what were you pointing at there? Well, I know number uh, 34 had to come out of the game for Carthage. Yeah. yeah, he was holding his hand, and I didn't want to look down because I didn't want to see a dislocated finger, but it was something under his chin, right? Just some blood. Oh, he's bleeding on the floor, so now we got to wipe out the floor. Oh, okay, that's okay. I, didn't, I, I thought you were pointing at something else there, Jay. Here we are, clean up the floor. Hey, that's right. It was a good game. Uh, they, they, I was at the first game against North Central. We were up 18 points. North Central came back and beat us there. 
they came down here today and uh, senior day is good for the seniors. They had a great game and they, uh, they pretty much put it to them. You know, the only thing I don't like about that is that we have a referee right here in front of it, and the referee from the furthest corner came and saw it. So, you know, I'll say this, too. Yeah, I can't get on referees too much. I would hate to be out there reffing games because of people like us. <laughs> it's a thankless job. If they're getting paid for them, you like to see them do a good job, but it doesn't always happen. That was a sure dunk by Sean Clemens if he would have got that one, and that's what I wanted to see. See, Augie comes down to tough man-to-man. -to -man. I think that's why Coach G substitutes so much, because he gets fresh legs in on all of them all the time. Right. He, he's, uh, he's rotating in, in out, keep him fresh, and you get the most out of him on both ends of the court. Carrigan. Oh, Theo Powell is tough. He had seen him elevate now two or three times, and he gets up pretty much about 6 to 12 inches higher than any of our guys. There we go. Did I just mention something about Sean dunking it? Oh, uh, move around, Brad Novak. Brad tried to get that. Cartridge falls back in his 2 3 zone. It's a tight 2 3 zone. They don't extend it out very far. Uh, nice pass again. Oh, That's the second. Bullet pass is had to the uh, open man in the lane, Jeff. No, Jay. Jay, that's a beautiful pass. Beautiful bullet, bullet like. I mean, it was really. Uh... Comes down. That's uh, kids watching the game. Of, uh, too bad we don't have instant replay because when you see a pass like that, Jay is watching out of the corner of his eye. Boom, he was there. That's a beautiful pass. Long rebound for Harrigan. Brings it down, takes it to the hole, and no, oh, off the front iron. Count the basket. Looks like uh, Carthage was in the net. Good call by the official. A lot of times you don't see that. You'll see, uh, you'll see hands in the middle, and you'll never get a goaltending call off of that. But uh, this, this official made the call. Good call. Jay, help me out here. The head coach of Carthage is hot. His name is Bosco. Help me with this name. Come on, Jay. Help me with that name. Jerk of it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Anyway, he wasn't too happy with that call, but it was. His hand was in the rim. Augie comes out now, man-to-man -man press, and the score is tied, 24-24. Finally got it tied up. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Almost had a 10-second call. Very close. Augie's more fired up. It's amazing what a dunk or a nice play does. Nice block. Blocked by Gierke. Carthage comes up with a rebound, though. Vikings have really turned up the D here. Yep. Yeah. And a six on the shot clock. Five. Long three. Off the front of the rim. Travis Hoy with another rebound. Kirsten ahead to Sexton. The Harrigan for three. Long off the iron. And Carthage now with the rebound. A oh, call. oh. Great call by the official. Oh, it was on Travis Hoy. Jay, that's right. I mean, I, I'm going to say this. It was a foul on Travis, but he did not call it until Travis was halfway down the court. If the Carthage, number four here for Carthage, uh, Curtis Hammer, if he would have slipped and fell, and, and they never would have called it. Carson. It's a knock to wait for him. I don't think Drew's in a groove tonight at all right now. Drew's going to come on, too. 
Well, everybody's yelling, but I think that was Carthage's ball there. Augie's still fired up, though. This is, bit, this is the most I've seen him fired up. They got a good crowd here. They're seven and three in the conference. They need this game. That's an offensive, yep. Good call. Carson draws the charge. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are they calling here? Oh, don't reverse this. That's an offensive foul, big time. Calling the offensive foul, but they counted the baskets with the arguments about. I don't like that call, Jim. It, it, whenever there's an offensive oh, foul, call the basket foul. should not call. Yeah, if it's offensive, that means the guy had position. You can not, you can kill the guy. Well, not kill, but he can put him over, I guess. Twenty-six to twenty-four, Carthage up by two, and they're still in their uh, zone defense. Carson works it inside the hood. Back in the hood again. Makes his move in the lane and hits five. Twenty-four. Trevor Kaki on the call on the foul. Foul was on Trevor Cocaine. His first. Trevor Cocaine. What? No, wait a minute. Where's that name at here? It is. That no, that's not cocaine. I call it cocaine. Yeah, cocaine. That's not cocaine. Maybe they're saying it that way. Call his parents. Travis Hoyt long on the free throw. Turn into the one and one. Vikings down two. This is a good game, finally. And you're not snoozing on me this time. You're actually awake. A couple of yawns that uh, got a lot of rest last night. <laughs> Here we go. Inside the foul. foul. That was a, that's what we call a good foul. That was a good foul. There was no chance of him. Foul was on Joe Baldwin. His first. What we like to see there, a guy like Theo Powell, Two feet from the basket, that's a sure two points. Now you don't want to hurt him, but what you want to do, you won't hurt him anyway, but what you want to do is make sure he doesn't make that shot. Because that was a... Right. That could... He's going to have to earn the two points for the Exactly. That could have been a dunk or sure two, so make him earn it this way, and he does. What a nice looking player he is, Jim. Yes, he is. A, he uh, elevates. Got a nice shot. Plays good defense. They didn't call it. No. Down to six on the shot clock. Hoyt, turn around, jump for good. That's Travis's range too, about 10, 15 feet out, in it, or from 10, 15 feet in, and that's his range. That's a nice looking shot. Nice move, nice shot. The shot clock is running down. He had to get it off. Kurt, yep. the Jim DePaul, Clements with another steal. Got 47 seconds left, Jay and a half. Vikings down two. Carson takes it to the basket, forces a shot up and it goes. That's what I've seen Drew the last couple of years, the way he plays, driving in. Drew's not that tall either. Drew's probably about, uh, oh, 6'2", but 6'2", 190, against the big guys, he gets it done. He elevates well. There's a nice steady service going inside. And just like you commented earlier with the screw queen percentage, he should probably be doing more of that. Yeah. He elevates in what we call another thing, hang time. He does hang pretty good. Well, and draws a lot of fouls. As a result of that, good free throw shooter, so he'd be well advised to earn his three pointers on drives as opposed to a three point shot. And Jay, you Vikings do with a one point lead, 20 seconds to go here, 13 on the shot clock. Carthage is working it down for one shot, this but he could have. Coach G wants walk. I did too, but he's going to get him with a foul. Bernard was taking ball the ball was the on basket. Joe Bowman. His Bowman second picks up his second. Team ball, number nine. You know, seconds to go, one and one. Vikings down, or up by one point. 
You mentioned a little bit ago uh, regarding Drew Carson's going to line and why he should. Jay, he shot 140 times at the free throw line, made 112 for 80 percent. That's because he's driving. Right. He needs to take it to the hole. 80 percent free throw shooter. Missed by Bernard. This is the front end. Vikings can work it for the last shot. But inside seven seconds. Long one by uh, Harrigan. Didn't go. Carson. Wild attempt to win. The Vikings go into the halftime break with a 1.8 lead. 29-20. And Jay, I think we got to take a break because we got to figure out if our batteries are dead. Missy, are we going to be okay for the second half? She she says we're going to try. So we'll see you in the second half. All right, Jay, we're back. 44 seconds to go before the start of the second half, and we got the statistics here. And you can see what we talked about earlier. We're 0 for 0 for 7. Augustine is 0 for 7 for three-point shots. Sean Clements, who we talked about earlier, 4 for 5. He's got a total of 10 points. Drew Carson's two for four. He's got five points. Not a very high scoring game, but two things I noticed. Jay McAdams throwing beautiful passes. Travis Hoyt, four rebounds already. Yeah, the uh, other things, a couple of other things that stood out to me was the Carthage field goal percentage, 10 for 27, 37%. And I can't believe this one. Powell was one for six the first half. Yeah. Seemed well, like he made more than one basket, but I know he got fouled on a couple of those. He was four for four from the line. So they've held him to six points. And uh, Menard, he was two for six, one of those being a three. He had uh, five points in the first half. So the Vikings are playing good, solid defense, keep it up, and, and I think the game will be theirs. Rebounding-wise, it was a 19-16 advantage to Carthage. Yeah, here we are again, one last back. Augie shooting, like you said, 50%. Carthage shooting 37%, yet there's only one point difference in the game. Uh, the three, three for eight from three, uh, three point land for Carthage and 0 for seven for the Vikings. So they picked up three points that way. Karstens drives in, misses the bank shot and Carthage clears the rebound. Setting the lineups here for Carthage, uh, 20 is Scott Hood, 24 is Trevor Cocaine, 30 is Mark Morrison, 44 Kevin Menard, 54 Theo Powell. Yeah, I can't believe that kid's name is Cocaine. I don't think it is. I think I'd change it if it was. <laughs> Cocaine, or no, that was Morrison that fired the three, missed it. Over the back foul on 24, Trevor. We're just going to call him Trevor. Let's call him by first names. Might as well forget that last name. Follow us on Trevor Cocaine. Oh, they, see, they call him Cocaine. We'll have to call him Cocaine. Anyway, there goes Theo Powell. Takes the ball the hole again. Now he's one for seven. If he has that kind of game and, and Augie can keep shooting like they're doing, it's going to be close at the end. But if he has any one of a good game, we could be in trouble. Yeah, he's, he's powerful inside. The Vikings are doing a good job defensively to hold him to that kind of a shooting percentage. Looks like he's over Clements back there. No call. Hood brings it up, pushes it up for Carthage, pushes off, goes in for a little bank shot, draws the foul from Thomas. Foul was on Jim Thomas, his first. Yes, Two Scott Hood taking, a, taking him to the hole. He had the advantage on him. He's 6'1", and uh, Thomas is only 5'9". Uh, first shot good. Ties the game up at 29. Set in the lineup for the Vikings, 20 is Drew Carstens, 22 Jim Thomas, 32 Joe Bauman, 34 Brad Novak, 40 Sean Clements. Hood knocks them both down and the Redmen lead by one. Thomas into the front court to Novak, over to Bauman. Carstens posting up inside, Bauman brings it around the right side. 18 pointer off the baseline, nice shot. That's the thing, Carthage is in a 2-3 zone. Anytime a team goes in a zone, they're telling you you can't shoot. We shot 50% at the halftime, shoot them. Keep shooting it. One Powell, three for turn Powell. around yeah. again. No good, and the Vikings clear it. Three on five break. Is uh, Bauman and Novak got tangled up under the basket. Karstens works it inside to Clements, goes inside, gets the double team from Powell and Morrison knocks it down, and the Vikings have a three-point lead. 
That was Sean took it against Mark Morrison and Theo Powell. Nice hard move to the basket and got the got the two points. Powell inside gets fouled by Thomas. He posted up the smaller Thomas. Foul was on Jim Thomas. That's a good foul on Jim Thomas. Again, like we said at the first half, that was a dunk or two points by uh, Theo. So let make him make him at the line. Yeah, he, he's having to make his points from the line. And also, he misses that one, so it's four for five from the line for him. But also, sometimes that easy layup or easy dunk can get him going from the field. So just to prevent that from, from happening is good, too. He misses both free throws. There you go. That's why it's a good foul. Easy two turns into a nothing. Vikings can increase this three-point lead. Novak over to Karstens. Thomas cuts through the zone. Looks like the Vikings are... are Run a kind of a circular weave type thing through this zone. Carson's is out at the top of the key over to Thomas on the right baseline. He brings it out front, cross court to Bauman who drives the lane, dishes to Novak. He saves it out of bounds. Back to Carson's for three and the 35 second clock went off before Carson's could fire that up. Bauman threw one, one pass too many. He needed to get that shot up. Carson's was open, but it was too late. Blue well, did knock down that three. Unfortunately, it didn't count. Coach G was up on that one. Uh, he was kind of mad because they should have got that shot off. Hood, no good on the three. Paul. Paul gets called for the clear out. I agree with that. Sh Sean Clemens tried to get on there. Paul held him with his left hand and held him out. That was a good foul. First foul on Paul. Oh, get the ball back. I'm glad he's he's having a frustrating night. He's got to be one for eight right now. Augie playing good defense on him. Gierke comes in from for Clements, and it could be keeping that fresh body in there on him that's that's uh, able to produce this. Thomas from the baseline three pointer good, and the Vikings have a 36 30 lead. Jay, that's our first three pointer of the game. We got to be one for about nine. Couldn't have come at a better moment. There we it go. Was good. Deal. It was a good offensive possession. Novak on the break. Gets the layup. Redmen want a timeout. Coach Bosco Jerkovic calls the timeout. He's mad right now. Hey, we want to take a minute here to, to thank Family Ties Production and anybody watching this that uh, would want to advertise on here. They uh, Jesse Medina runs Family Ties. Nice stuff for the cable channel, 19, to put this on. And uh, if you're interested in advertising, they'll put the phone number on. So take a look at that. Jess does a great job. This is great for the kids, and we have fun doing this. We'll see you back after the timeout. Here we go, Jay. During the timeout, Jay was trying to instruct me to look somewhere else. I, I, I don't know where you're talking about. We'll talk about that later, Jay. Carthage brings it inbounds. Vikings are turning the pressure up, full court pressure. Hood. To Powell, back out to Morrison. Travis Hoyt's in the game, working hard on Powell right now. They're looking for Powell. Hoyt's all over him out front. How, uh, Powell, a back door inside to Trevor, and Trevor missed it. A nice rebound by Bill Gerke, though. He was in there, got it between there. There's Travis. Working inside to Hoyt. Hoyt, little turnaround, left handed, half hook. Rolls off the rim. Carthage clears the rebound. You know, Augustan is really hustling. I've watched him like three or four games ago. It seems like they're really hustling a lot faster than he did before. Here comes Jay McGann. Starting. I was wondering where Jay's going to come oh, in. Oh, another miss from inside. Carstens with the rebound. Loses his foot and gets it over to Gierke and back to Drew. The Drew problem picks up his dribble at the top of the key and now works it over to Bauman. Bauman inside to Gierke. Back out front to Thomas, over to Karstens. They're trying to get Bauman. Gerke in, uh, in traffic. Thomas for two. a three. No good. Paul with the rebound. Works it over to Hood. Down to Menard. Menard with Karstens on him. Yeah, they get Karstens for the push. Foul was on Drew That's the second foul on Drew. Foul, McAdams, Thornton, and Sexton into the game. 
You know, and Jay McAdams Thornton, again, Tom. we're Moliners, but Jay McAdams Thornton and Travis Hoyt get a lot more playing time. They're playing a lot better, and the more playing time they get, the better they seem to be playing. Menard with a nice baseline move. Gets it gets two, and the uh, Vikings bring it down. Karstens back out front to Sexton. Inside to Gierke. Turns. Needs to get out of the lane. McAdams Thornton to Hoyt. Knocked away by Paul. Hood brings it up for Carthage. Powell goes inside, dishes it off to number four, Hergesheimer, who gets fouled on the way up. Basket's good. Fouls on Gierke, and uh, Hergesheimer will try to finish the three-point play. Clements checks in for Gierke. I don't know how that ball went in, but it did for him. Ryan came out of there and, and uh, wanted a high five from everybody and he should just be lucky. He didn't call that anyway. Went off the back of the rim and went in. Cut the lead to three and the Vikings need a bucket here to keep this lead. McAdam Thornton on the right wing over to Carson's at the top of the key. Works it to Sexton. McAdam Thornton back to the top of the key. Brings it to the free throw line. Tough shot by Jay. Hoyt on the board, taps it, but it's pulled down by Hargesheimer. Works it up court. Hood has it out front for Carthage. Menard, here goes Working inside to Powell. Works on, spins on Clements, puts it in. All of a sudden, we got a one point game, Jim. Yep. They well, cut there goes this, Theo. Uh, That's, uh, Theo made that. That's probably two for about 12. So if he starts getting hot, we could be in trouble. Carstens for three. Looked like he got fouled. Three pointer goes. The Vikings have a 41 37 lead. I remember coming last year and watching Drew Carstens hit three after three. Oh, they should have called that. But Drew was hitting three after three. If he starts getting hot, Carstens could have a problem. That's right, Jim. Uh, the Vikings, uh, as we indicated, were 0 for 7 the first half, and I think they're 2 for 3 here in the second half on three pointers. So if they pick that up, uh, they, they uh, should open that inside game up a little bit more. Here we go, the August cheerleaders throwing these shirts out. Why don't we ever get anybody throwing us anything, Jay? Here, put your hand down there, see if we can get one. Get one for Missy. I think Coach called a full timeout. Coach G's down there giving instructions to his players. It's gonna be a close game. That's a good game. Uh, My worry is if Theo gets hot, that's his first bucket he's made in probably three quarters of this game. And it, the way he jumps up and elevates, it appears nobody can stop him. So it's gonna be interesting. But if Drew Carson gets hot, or Jim Thomas or Joe Bauman. That's what we need too. Yeah, the Vikings need to be uh, need to need to be active defensively. Continue to play that tough, hard-nosed man-to-man defense and make it hard on on Paul to get a uh, comfortable shot. That was a uh, first time in a long time he had a shot that was that that he wasn't really challenged on. They're letting him play a little bit here. Powell's working inside. He's got position again. He draws the charge. Carson set up for the charge. Clements went for the steal. Didn't get it. Carson's was set up right behind Powell and drew the charge from him. And Bosco Durkovich, he is mad. He Bosco is Durkovich and Fritz Larson are at odds right now. You know, I wonder what the, the coaches really say to the referees as they walk by. Do you have any comments what you think they say? Nice hook on Sean Clemens. Good strong move by Clemens. The Vikings had the lead back up to six here. Well, with a name, with a name like Bosco Durkovic, he might be talking in a different language, Jim. We might not be able to understand. <laughs> Hargesheimer inside. Jay was up Jay high. McAdams was up real high for that rebound. He brings it down court. Picks up his dribble, Sexton back out front. Karstens works it inside to Clements. Jump up, and the Vikings have the lead back up to eight. That's one thing I noticed like earlier in the game, Bob Theo. He does not try to block that shot. I'd go at him all night. Well, the rest of the night, anyway. 
Menard. Fouled on a three-point attempt by McAdams Thornton. He'll go to the line for three oh, shots. His second team foul, number five. I know Jay's not happy with himself because he knows that uh, when anybody shoots a three, you don't even want to be close to him. Yeah, he was off balance for that three, and I'd rather rather take my chances of him knocking that down as opposed to three foul shots. Yeah, and Trevor shooting a three-pointer. I mean, he's only he's three for 15 for the year on three-pointers. I think I'll let him go. Wholesale substitutions for the Vikes. Thomas, Novak, Harrigan back into the game. Hoyt, McAdams, Thornton, and Sexton checks, check out. You know, these these stats that are provided by Dave Unrath from the, um, Dave Rath from the uh, August stand, they're great stats. Some of the players should read these before because these tell you what these guys are doing. That's right. That's exactly 15, right. I wouldn't even touch that kid. The Vikings tried to lob into Carson, threw it behind him, and Carthage comes up with the loose ball. Pile out front, Novak all over him. 22 for Carthage. Hadn't seen much of him tonight. Nikitas. Hargesheimer works out front against Clements. Oh, that's a long one. Hood with a long one. Powell pushed off on Novak. No call. Novak saves it right back to Powell, and he gets the dunk. That was a big push off there by Paul. Three referees, none, none of them saw it. Jay, that was a uh, nice dunk by Paul. That was nice a nice dunk, hand. but he should have been called for the push off. I agree. I hope that doesn't uh, charge uh, Carthage here. I wish there's some way we can come, make him come out of that zone, but being up eight points, he didn't want to do it. So here we go. In the corner, going to be in trouble. Nope. Carson's open from three. Gets bump, works it back out to Thomas. Into Clemens. Another turnaround jump hook. Shot clock was down to three as Sean got the, got the jump hook and the Vikings uh, pushed the lead back to five. Earlier we said that's why Sean Clemens shoot 54%. Low, good percentage shots like good that. Good for a three. In and out. Harrigan on the rebound. Thomas pushes it up court. I'd look for Clemens again. Harrigan. Long three, good! 50 to 42 lead for the Vikes with just over 10 minutes to go. Now we're giving something for the Augie kids to, to cheer about over there. I think if I was a Carthage player, I wouldn't want to Carthage oh, looks for again. Powell again. We had another, oh, missed the dunk. He was fouled from behind by Clemens, couldn't finish it. And he'll go to the line. He'll have to earn these two again, Jim. So only the second on Clemens, so I'll call that a good foul. Number four, four Ryan over there, Ryan Hagerslayer, 6'7", 194. He had little words with uh, number 22, our Jim Thomas. First one by Theo Powell's good. Bauman and Gierke back in the lineup for the Vikings. Clements and Carson's check out. Well, you see Powell, Theo Powell. You've seen Theo Powell come low tonight. He also shooting about 54%, and you can see, he, although he's probably two for 10 tonight, every shot he's taken has been within 10 feet. Yeah, he stays within himself. Well, in Jim, that's that's probably the case uh, with him. If he if he was a good shooter from outside, he probably wouldn't be playing Division Three basketball. Exactly. Harrigan works it over to Thomas. Thomas back out to Bauman. Bauman works it over to Harrigan. Got caught up in the air. He had the shot. He just had the shot. He left his feet. Got caught up in the air with the defensive pressure and turned it over. Now he gets beat on the baseline. Rebound good for Hargesheimer. Thomas works it into Gierke. Little jump hook in and out, rattles it in and out. 
Carthage with the rebound. Four point deficit as they come down. You know, I personally think they gotta get Sean Clemens back in there. Maybe he need, he's probably taking a break, I understand that, but he is, he's hot. Another three-pointer by Carthage, missed, long rebound, gotta get the ball. Bauman out front, drives in, kicks it back out to Thomas. Thomas over to Harrigan. Back out front to Bauman. See, we're trying to get inside the same players that it is, Bill. Bill's got to make a move, do something. Gierke moves nice inside. Move. That's a good move. Misses a jump hook again. See, he took Sean Clemens out, and Sean was getting those shots. Now Sean's coming back in. It's, a, it's another uh, line change for the Vikings. Five new players set to come in. They need a good defensive stand here. Yep, we got to hold them. Nice block by Good Bill defense. Gierke yep. on the block. Thomas pushes it up. Harrigan with a quick three. Off the front of the rim. Novak, good rebound. Gets fouled on the way back up. Brad Novak couldn't make it, but it did. nice position with his body. Got the rebound. Would have been nice to get it there, but he's got to make him here now. Foul, number four. Oh, Hargersheim is fourth foul. Where have we been? Wow. 6'7", 195 out of Des Plaines. Main West you played at. Main West High School. He was going to bring uh, Bosco over there. He was going to bring Theo back in, but he decided not to. He's going to come with number 21, Keenan Johnson, 6'4", from Kenosha. By the way, that's where Carthage is. Kenosha is a beautiful uh, uh Place, Carthage, beautiful campus. Hometown boy. I went lake fishing out of there once, Jay. Does that uh, interest you? A little lake fishing for some king salmon? Well, it wasn't fun. I got sick. <laughs> it's probably what I do, too. Come on, Brad. Brad, Brad. Novak hits the second. He checks out of the game now as the Vikings have, have a, a complete five-man change into the game are uh, Hoyt, Karstens, McAdams, Thornton, Sexton, and Clements. And Brad Novak. Full court uh, pressure. Rock Island Pride. Carthage beats it easily, but uh, pass at the feet of uh, Menard. He comes up with the three. No good. Karstens with the rebound. Two on two break. He kicks it out to Sexton. Comes to the elbow with a 15-foot shot. No good. Carthage comes down with the rebound. 51-46 lead for the Vikings with seven and a half to go. You know, you got Sean Clemens back in there. We come down and fire him up. You got to go back where the bread and butter is, and Sean was doing it. Key to travel, sure. Good call. Palming violation on Keena Johnson, the Kenosha, Wisconsin. See, now Keenan just got in the game, so I think I would have run a couple of times up and down before I tried to, to do that. McAdam Sorn inside the Hoy, kicks it back out to Karstens. Tied up in the corner, kicks it to Sexton. Karstens into Hoyt. Hoyt back out to McAdam Sorn. We're down to 13 on the shot clock. Over to Sexton. He had Clements open there, he didn't get him the ball. Hoyt back out to McAdam Sorn. Long shot, bank is open for three for Jay McAdams Thornton. Look at Jay's all cool and calm and collected because he knew that was going in. That's his normal shot. Okay, Jim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it went in. It was a four shot. The shot clock was running down, and he put the shot up, which you need to do. And uh, he was defended, threw it, threw it off the glass, and it went in. Clements high for the rebound. Out to Saxon, down to McAdam Sarton. Looks inside to Hoyt. Nothing there, back out front. Carson's with a three! Six minutes to go, and the Vikings have an 11 point lead. His first unit came back in, Jim, and they're on a 7 0 run since That's they right. came there back in. Carson with a steal for the dunk! Vikings bolt to a 59-46. Oh, 
13 point lead with 5.45 to go. Next Viking lead. Oh, Full court pressure. Yep. This last group that came in for the Vikings is on a... Uh, about a 10-0 tear. 10 a 10 0 tear here since they came in. They pushed the lead right back up. and Oh, we got a walk out there in 34. Gee, I think we should rep them up here and just take the guys off the floor. What do you think? 22. Nick, Nick Nikitas. Nikitas knocks down a three-pointer, brings the uh, Redmond back within 10. Clements inside fouled. Now, Nick Nikitas, he's 22 for 65 for the year in three points, so he's a legit three-point shooter. Team ball, number five. Vikings will trigger from the baseline. Sexton inside the Hoyt, goes strong, blocked out of there by Powell. McAdams Thornton pulls down the rebound. Right back to Hoyt, over to Clements. Dribbles through the lane, he's in trouble here. Back to McAdams Thornton for three, in and out, oh! In and out, back in again, and then back out. That's a good shot for Jay. I've seen him make those in high school, and here at Augie, it's no different. He can make those. Paul out front with the ball. That would be a foul on Travis. back. Again, here comes Augustana Vikings out. We got two minutes and 44 seconds left. Jay Augie's up 65 to 55. Carthage just made a bucket and they caught a quick timeout. Made a three-pointer there and a quick timeout. They pulled within 10. Travis Hoy runs the baseline, gets it into Thomas. Thomas dribbles in the backcourt. Needs to hurry and get it across. Timeout. Good call. Couldn't get it across in 10 seconds so they Made the timeout call. Time up, Augustana. 30 no, second timeout. Thomas was trying to dribble, dribble up court and wasn't getting any help. The only guy back to help him was Travis Hoy, the center. Yeah, but he could have turned around and thrown it to Travis, made the defense come over, and then they opened up. So that's really not Travis's fault or anybody else's fault. Jim, when you're trying to break a press, what you have to do is you can dribble into two guys. When you see him coming, get rid of the darn ball. Yeah, you don't want to dribble. He, he was maintaining the dribble the entire time and need, needed to get rid of the ball. But they had the timeouts to give, so he wisely called the timeout, knew he was in trouble, and now they'll trigger from the side court. I just remember our, my old playing days, and that's what they taught us. It's like a hot potato on a, a press. Get rid of the basketball. Back to Thomas. Thomas. Up to Carstens. Carstens back to See, Thomas. That's, that's how you do it. Thomas foul. foul. Yep. He'll go to the line for the one and one. Foul on 20, Hood. I've been impressed with Hood. He's a, he's a tough little player for Carthage. Out of Rockford Lutheran, six foot one. Freshman. I know he's gonna be a tough player in another four years here at Augie. Playing against Augie. Missed the front end of the one and one, and luckily Carthage bobbled the ball on the baseline and turned it right back over to the Vikings. Jim Thomas shooting 73% of free throws, so that's a he was kind of mad at missing that one. No, he was very mad at missing that from the expression on his uh, face. Throw it all the way to the backcourt to Bauman. Now the Vikings should milk the clock here a little bit with this 10 point lead. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Hoyt's fouled out front by 24. Well, that's Trevor. There's Trevor again. Everybody's, we're, we're gonna have to ask if, if, if that's how they say his name. I can't believe it's cocaine. Cause it's not spelled like cocaine. Diane's eyeing that camera shot on Travis again. This time he yeah. knocks it down for her. She's, got, she's, she's triggering up another shot here for, for Travis. Hopefully he knocks the second one down for his mom. If the people are wondering on the camera shot, Diane is the one with the yellow taking a shot, and she gets another one. That's four points, two for Travis and two pictures. 
<laughs> Way to go, Diane. 12 point lead for the Vikings as we approach two minutes in the ball game. Menard drives around Carson's to the baseline. That was a little too easy, Jim. Yeah, you should never let a guy go baseline. Clements back to Carstens. Fouled, but he puts it in anyway. Didn't get the call. Knocked it down. 12 point lead for the Vikings. He walked. What I was going to say earlier, when you're playing somebody on defense, you, you got to get down, you got to spread your legs, bend your knees, and if they can't shoot outside, they're going to drive. Don't let them go baseline because it all collapses on you. Now, That's right. It's easier said than done. That's right. You want to push back, back toward the middle. Now, some coaches have a different philosophy that they'll actually let them drive baseline thinking that defense will take it, but I believe driving to the middle where your help is. Nice ball handling Bomber there. works it across. Bikes have 23 left on the shot clock. They need to use some clock. Charge on Carstens as he ducks into. Fouls on through Carstens, his third. The Redmen defender, number 24, and Trevor. I couldn't see that, Jay, but I don't know if Drew put his shoulder into him or not. He ducked down, and he, he very easily could have put his shoulder and head right into the chest of the defender. Clements breaks free down. Down court, Karstens didn't see him before he got fouled. Yeah, Sean was wide open down court if Drew could have seen him, but Drew was dribbling between two or three people. It's hard to see him. Number 10. Well, it looks like the Vikes have this one under control. 12 point lead with a minute 15 to go, and Karstens shooting two. I think we can put it away here. First oh, one's no oh. good. It's amazing what the three pointers have done in this game now. But uh, luckily, Carthage is probably shooting about a cold 20%, 25% from three-point land. 13-point lead. Yeah. As we get down toward a minute to go. Trevor, no good. Again, Powell looks like he's pushing off to clear out, but no call. Another three. Powell and Clements battling. Finally, a call on Powell. See what Powell's doing, Jay, he's going up. He can jump. He's going up with his right hand and holding, pushing off with his left. Twice exactly. he did that. Finally, we got the call. And Sean Clemens was mad because when he came off there, I could see him yelling, and I agree with him. It's frustrating, you go up, try to get a, try to get a rebound, the other guy's got his hand on you. Here we go, come on, Sean. First one's in and out. You know what we maybe have to do is get Diane to take a picture of Sean, make him go in. Good yeah. job, good game, Drew. Here come Coach G now. J Coach G's gonna go to some of the reserves. Second one's good for Clements. Number 50 in for the Vikings is Aaron Thompson. Clements and Hoyt, Thomas check out. Number 30 into the game's Drew Wessels from Bettendorf. And number 45 is Matt Salisbury from Kiwani. Travis Hoyt did a great job rebounding, and Sean Clemens did it, did it all, rebounding and shooting. They had a good, good game inside. Powell gets that lay in, but they really, held, they really held Powell down. That was the difference in the game, I think, Jim. Nice pass in there. Vikings working it around, taking some time off the clock, doing a good job of it. Drew Wessels. and over to Bauman. Bauman gets fouled. Um, Jay, Drew Wessels, is that any relation to Coach Wessels of Davenport West? I'm, I'm pretty sure it is, Jim. I, I can't remember the exact connection, but it might be a, a, a grandson or. If it is, Coach Wessels has been over at Davenport West for many, many years, does a great job over there. And I'll tell you another thing, I've been watching Augie here. I didn't get to see the Augustana of St. Ambrose men's game when it happened a couple months ago, but I'll tell you what, if, if St. Ambrose beat Augustana and Augustana the way they're playing, Sam Ambrose has a heck of a team. Well, they're about 25 and three on the year, and, and uh, number two in the NAIA polls. So, yes, yeah, some very good basketball to be proud of here in the Quad Cities. Powell with a dunk. Powell's going to end up getting his 16, 18 points right around his average, but uh, he had to work for him tonight. 
Yeah, his 54% uh, shooting field goal percentage is not tonight. I bet he's ran out 30. Oh, he's top missed top a lot of easy first. shots. Vikings have done a great job defensively. To yeah, no, this, this win, Jay, moves Vikings to uh, eight and three in the CCIW. So Illinois Wesleyan and uh, a couple losses here or there could put us right back into it. And the uh, Vikings have Illinois Wesleyan here at home next Saturday, Jim. They started off kind of kind of slow at the beginning of the season, but they look a lot better. They look like they're playing together better and just look a lot more fluid. And even the reserves here coming to do a nice job of moving that ball. Thirteen seconds to go, eleven point lead. And Trevor Cocaine fouls out of the game. We get why the reserves are here at 13 seconds. We got Drew Wessels, number 30. He's from Bettendorf. He's a freshman. Um, number 50. We have Aaron Thompson, six foot seven senior from Greenville, Pennsylvania. Number 45 is Matt Salisbury. He's a forward. He's a junior out of Kiwani. And shooting a free throw. Well, you know what? That's not right. They have him as Jordan Watson. That's not Jordan Watson, 23. Jordan Watson is not here tonight. Now we have to find out who 23 is. Who wrote this program? Dave? Same guy that did that mowing program oh, a couple oh, weeks yeah. ago. I uh, wish we could get his name. I don't know who 23 is. Last down to five seconds. Here we go. Don't foul. Let him shoot this ball. Jay, that's it from Carver P. Santa Augustan of 74, Carthage 62. Big win for the Vikings. They, they moved to 8-3 in the CCIW. And uh, hot on the heels, uh, Illinois Wesleyan. I hope they can continue this next week. Again, we want to say thank you to Family Ties Production. Jess Medina has been doing a great job for many years putting this on with the cable channel. And we especially want to thank tonight his daughter, Missy, who came to work the, the camera. Again, if anybody out there has, has watched this, you like this, or, or